this state was giving Garden City for a purpose, but I don't know what's happening now. It's almost 7 p.m. I'm at an airport in Port Harcourt. You see those flames going up? Those are your illegal refineries. Organized crime. They started with just two, two, two. Started at about 5.30. Amazing how many, how many camps have been. Man, I lack words. I like words. I lack words. This is organized crime. In Potocut, River State's capital, there's been a black substance in the air causing the area to be polluted. It is best known as soot. For almost two years, this soot has disturbed the health and welfare of Potocut residents. To the dismay of many residents, the welfare of this soot has not improved. It is believed that the cause of this soot are legal and illegal refineries. In 2016, about August, and initially people thought um, the helps and the servants were not uh, cleaning the houses properly. So a lot of them lost their jobs. They're two months down the line. Everybody suddenly realized that, look, there's a common problem here that was bedeviling everybody. So people started realizing. So as we speak, it's about 20 months now down the line that we've been living and inhaling particulate matter. When you wake up in the morning, your whole house is covered in black. You have to clean and clean. Sometimes you clean after some hours, you have the suit back again. Every day when I wake up in the morning, I come out and see that there are dust all over the place. Even we have mobbed, I was seeing black, black things. When I wake up, I mob my house. Like every day I mob my, you definitely need to mob the floor. Because once you're waking up, like I sleep with my socks, you know, it's crazy. But you have to keep, keep uh, everything, you have to keep everything clean. My name is Bobby Rack. I'm a filmmaker and music video director based here in Port Harcourt City. I've been affected health wise. Uh, my daughter, my four-year-old daughter, suffered some serious respiratory ailments for three months straight. And that also affected me financially because I know how much I spent to treat her, to get her back, back to normal. I have a one-month-old son. And recently, while beating him, we used a cutting board to clean his ear and he came out all black. So as a result, we've been going for regular med medical checkups and um, everything that is necessary to cut down on the impact of the suit is being adhered to. I'm Mrs. Oko Ijoma, a businesswoman. I reside in Portacot here. When I clean my nose, I notice that there are black, black spots coming out and most times my nose that is always dry doesn't get dry again. Instead, most times it's wet. And once you put your hand inside the nose, you start seeing black things. There's no way I can stay indoor because I'm a businesswoman. I have to move to source for customers. This is boy, they call me back out of Korean AK, it's a fisherman. I remember like three weeks ago, you know, I felt ill and when I got to the hospital, the doctor was telling me I had issues with my lungs, you get me? I wake up in the morning, when I cough, I cough out black sometimes. We live here, we breathe here, we eat here. You go to South Africa and you say, This is, you say, Welcome to Sun City. You understand? So you can come to Butako and they say, Welcome to Suit City. From Garden City to Suit City, Potoko has been plagued with the dark matter that residents have been looking for solutions to. Residents have now become financially handicapped due to the effects of the suit on their health and businesses. A doctor who resides and practices in Potokot explained his observances on how the suit has affected himself, residents, and his patients. My name is Dr. B.A. Briggs. I'm a public health physician working with the Ignatia Surgery University of Education Hospital here in Port Harcourt. I've been having a respiratory tract infection, upper respiratory tract infection. Every morning I wake up and I cough up black substances from my mouth. Most of the people affected by this are women and children. Of course, pneumonia is one of the leading causes of um, the five mortality. So people are affected, people are affected, women are affected. Those that have cardiopulmonary diseases, they, it's going to increase with time. About eight asthmatic attacks.
attacks in one night when I was on duty here in the, in the hospital. Eight patients coming down with chronic I mean, acute asthmatic attacks. This is unprecedented. Since I've been working here for, for years, I haven't seen that before. This is my baby on the bed. And this is my net. Just watch this tissue. This tissue is white right now. And this is my net. Just take a look. Can you see that? This is what we've been building it for over one year. Look at that spot. Look at that end. Look at the tissue. It is white. Wash my hand. This is what we are building in. This has been going on since last year. And nobody wants to do anything about it. Not even the government. As in, I don't know. I don't know why, how long this is going to ha happen. If, until people start dropping dead. This is happening in PH. It's happening in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. It is happening every most every night. Every night. How can how can we have a government and nothing is happening? Nothing is going on. Aside from only seeking medical treatment, many found other possible solutions to this ongoing issue. In early 2018, residents of Potokot took to social media using the hashtag Stop the Suit to share how the suit has been affecting their daily activities and health, in hopes that this campaign will lead to a resolution in Potokot, best known as the Garden City. Some concerned residents have come together and decided to create awareness about the suit, not just to the government but also to international bodies. The Stop the Suit campaign is a campaign put together by concerned citizens, concerned individuals, devoid of political direction. People from different walks of life, people from different political backgrounds. So this campaign is being run by both members of the ruling party and the opposing party. With the failure to see a change in Potokot circumstance after taking the issue to social media, residents decided to protest. On the 19th of April 2018, residents of Potokot went to the streets. In the protest, residents wore t-shirts with Stop the Suit written on them. For us in the hashtag Stop the Suit campaign, we think that the, 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 the intervention by government at this point should be concrete and should be sustained and not just to uh, pay a lip service to what they are doing. We want to see concrete steps, we want to see environmental laws being uh, enacted and implemented. My name is Eugene Bells. I am the lead convener for the Stop the Suit campaign in River State. It's before us and it's in our faces, in our water. When you take your bath, runoff water is dark. But that's not the inspiration behind it. It's not about us, now. it's about the weaker people, like the children, pregnant women, and the elderly and those who have conditions like asthma and uh, respiratory problems. That's why it's affecting us, that's why we're speaking out. A prevalent concern has been whether the River State government and the local government have been responding to the ongoing issues plaguing the state. In a statement sent to Pulse, the special assistant to River State Governor Nisam Wike said the suit has been politicized. He also accused radio personalities in Potokot for pushing the agenda of the APC-led federal government at the center. He wrote, The security services, despite the several pleas of the River State Governor, have refused to seek alternative means of destroying illegal refineries. Instead, they continue to damage the environment by blasting the refineries and releasing the suit into the air. The River State government says Governor Wike is doing everything to combat the suit that has enveloped his domain, although many residents believe otherwise. According to a radio personality in River State, there was a panel set up by the government to look further into the matter, but residents have yet to receive feedback. Now, we expect local governments to become whistleblowers because they have a security vote. So wherever this thing happens, they should bring it to the attention of the public. Now, we expect the state government, River State government, to become the so that they, the lead advocate, particularly by releasing statistics of the spike in respiratory problem. The Nigerian Medical Association in River State is quiet, so we don't have data concerning to know the spike, if there be any spikes in respiratory related problems. The River State government is not giving us data. Uh, it's that they are doing the blame game. So but this is not about blame game. People are beginning to fall sick. We need all tiers of government must come together in a bipartisan approach and fight this scourge. You see that boat steaming ahead? I wish I could um, get a very good view of it. That's a gunboat. That boat steaming ahead, that's a gunboat. 
They are going to collect their share. Pure organized crime. We know the suit is caused by refineries, both legal and illegal. And since these refineries are run by government parastatals, it's the government that can put an end to it. What I believe can stop the suit is the stopping of the further emissions of the suit. The sources of the suit are known to agencies of government at all levels, both the state and the federal government. They should stop the suit at source. Number one source is the gas flaring that is going on through the activities of oil and gas exploration in the Niger Delta, especially for Tarkot. It is believed that legal and illegal refineries are the cause of this suit, but there is no categorical evidence that proves Potsicut refineries are the cause. Since learning of the government's position on the suit, residents have been taking precautions to limit their exposure as much as possible. Although many reveal it's almost inevitable to avoid any contact with the suit, they try their best to make sure their immediate surroundings are safe to the best of their ability. My windows are all shut and um, you make sure you've been at home you don't leave anything, you edible, exposed. And um, um, it's difficult, you can't bring any bright thing out. You, all your bright clothes, you need to keep them covered. Furnitures, you need to keep them covered. You just have to change. And uh, you don't walk around your house with bare feet anymore. You need to wear shoes or slippers. You need to wear footwear whenever you're indoors. If not, your legs will be dark. And um, you need to find a way to cover your bedding so that when you climb your bed, you do not stain or dirty your bed, and you must take your bath more than twice a day. It's, so, it's a tiny particle that cannot be seen. So most time when you're fetching water, it enters into your water. It has affected that water, you won't know. So that's why we have been advised that we should always put disinfectants into our water before bathing. If, you, if you're eating, make sure you cover your food even inside the kitchen. You know, so don't leave anything open. If you see whenever it rains in Patakot, we advise people not to be under the rain because it's practically acid rain because you see the white substance on your car. Staying indoors wouldn't help the matter because the suits are very, very tiny that even when you're in your ass, it can get to you also. With the suits still having high prevalence in Potsakot, a petition has been made to get the attention of the federal government of Nigeria as this vastly affects the lives of 6 million Potsakot residents. This suit that has been blanketing the city has caused various health problems such as respiratory issues, cancer, and infertility in women. Residents ask, when will the suit stop? For more information on the suit in Potsakot, visit our website at www.pulse.ng.